Rocket science is tough. Even the most reliable rockets can stumble. SpaceX's Falcon 9, the most successful rocket in history, recently pulled off a flawless landing on a drone ship in the Atlantic, only to topple over moments later in a rare mishap. But the drama didn't end there. Just one day later, another SpaceX rocket booster encountered issues, forcing the delay of Starship Flight 8. Amidst the wave of sad news related to the rocket launch, there is finally a ray of hope. The private landing ship Blue Ghost is here to turn things around. What really happened? Let's break it all down in today's episode of Tech Map. Anyway, our next goal is 100,000 and we need your support to get there. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do. We appreciate your help, thank you. During Sunday night's Oscars ceremony, SpaceX launched a batch of 21 Starlink Internet satellites from Florida's Space Coast. The Falcon 9 rocket flying the mission lifted off from Cape Canaveral Space Force Station at 9.24 p.m. ET carrying the Starlink 12 to 20 mission, which included 13 satellites with direct-to-cell capability to low Earth orbit. Everything went smoothly as usual, when a little more than eight minutes after liftoff, the Falcon 9's first stage returned to Earth and touched down in the Atlantic Ocean on SpaceX's Just Read the Instructions drone ship. However, the booster, known by the designation B-1086, tipped over after landing due to a fire in the aft or rear section of the rocket. Following the successful landing, an off-nominal fire in the aft end of the rocket damaged one of the booster's landing legs, which resulted in it tipping over. The company wrote on X, This is the first Falcon 9 tipping over after landing, since a similar incident in August. Less than a year ago, another booster, namely B-1062, also caught fire fell over while landing at sea after a record-breaking Starlink launch. Footage shows fire suppression systems firing up as soon as the rocket lands to put out any fires from residual propellants in the rocket systems. The rocket then was grounded while SpaceX worked with the FAA to resolve the anomaly. This time, while it's unclear whether FAA grounds Falcon 9 again, SpaceX is targeting no earlier than Thursday, March 6th, for the launch of NASA's SphereX and Punch missions. While disappointing to lose a rocket after a successful mission, the team will use the data to make Falcon even more reliable on ascent and landing, SpaceX said. This event is part of SpaceX's ongoing efforts to enhance the reliability of its reusable rocket technology, as the company plans to analyze the data to improve future Falcon 9 missions. Despite the loss being rare, given their 414 successful landings out of 426 attempts, honestly, it's always a bit heartbreaking to see a rocket falter. But knowing SpaceX, they'll dig into the root cause, fix it, and come back even stronger. That's just what they do. So what about you? If you're feeling the same way, Let's give B-1086 the send-off it deserves. Drop a RP B-1086 in the comments below. The poor booster in the March 2nd launch was relatively new by SpaceX's standards, since it was the rocket's fifth and final mission. It's unlike the previously failed landing booster, B-1062, which completes 23 missions. B-1086 flew three previous Starlink missions, including Sunday's launch as well as the GOESU and Maxar 3 missions. For SpaceX, though, the mission this time is considered a done deal, since the Falcon 9's upper stage, meanwhile, continued its ascent to orbit, where it deployed the 21 Starlink satellites about 65 minutes after liftoff as planned. This launch marked the 20th orbital rocket launch of the year thus far from Florida's space coast. Meanwhile, SpaceX's first 2025 rocket launch from Florida took place on January 3rd to send the Thuraya 4 satellite into geosynchronous orbit for a telecommunications company based in the United Arab Emirates. Among those 20 launches, there is a launch of Firefly's Blue Ghost lander aboard Falcon 9 on January 15th from Kennedy Space Center's Pad 39A. 
B-1086. Launch on March 2nd also marks SpaceX's 26th Falcon 9th mission of 2025, of which 19 have been dedicated to the company's Starlink network. SpaceX currently has more than 7,000 operational Starlink satellites in low Earth orbit. This year, SpaceX is hoping to break records with a staggering 175 to 180 launches. And more importantly, that's just for Falcons, compared to 138 rockets in total in 2024. This could also be Starship's biggest year yet, and maybe even by the end of it, it's an operational rocket. 2024 was the year SpaceX turned up the heat on Starship testing. Four test flights, a triumphant landing, and multiple controlled splashdowns proved they weren't just inching forward, they were making giant leaps. But 2025? That's where things get truly electrifying. SpaceX is pushing to bring Starship closer than ever to full operational status. That means testing its Starlink deployment system, achieving sustained orbital operations, and maybe even launching actual satellites. And with FAA approval in the works for up to 25 Starship flights per year, we could be looking at nearby weekly launches, an unprecedented pace for a rocket of this scale. If SpaceX could achieve so much with just four test flights, imagine what 20 more will unlock. The long-awaited Block 2 variant made its debut, sacrificing some payload space for improved performance. But the real game-changer? Block 3 which could finally transform Starship from a groundbreaking prototype into a fully operational workhorse. SpaceX is in a race against time to get Block 2 hardware up and running, because the future of lunar exploration depends on it. The sooner Block 2 proves itself, the sooner Block 3 can take shape, and NASA is watching closely. Why? Because SpaceX holds the $2.9 billion contract to develop the Starship Human Landing System, HLS, for NASA's Artemis III mission, the mission that will return astronauts to the moon for the first time in over 50 years. But to make that a reality, Starship needs a game-changing upgrade. Advanced cryogenic fluid management, the key to efficient orbital refueling. Without it, sustained lunar missions and eventually deep space exploration simply aren't possible. Block 3 isn't just another iteration. It's the version that could redefine what's possible in spaceflight. One of the critical enhancements in Block 3 will be its systems for cryogenic fluid management. And if SpaceX gets it right, it won't just be a step forward for Starship. It'll be a giant leap for humanity's return to the moon and beyond. One thing is clear. 2025 is shaping up to be the year that defines the future of spaceflight. Buckle up. While SpaceX's Falcon 9 rocket suffered a failure during landing, a day later, the company's Super Heavy booster also suffered a failure that forced SpaceX's Starship Flight 8 to be aborted. SpaceX was scheduled to launch the eighth test flight of Starship on Monday, March 3rd. Nevertheless, less than 30 minutes before the planned launch at 5.45 p.m. Central Standard Time, Commentator Dan Hewitt noted that engineers were working on an issue that might cause a hold at T-40 seconds. That issue did cause a hold to go into place for more than five minutes. SpaceX briefly lifted the hold, but about five seconds later, a new hold was put in place due to issues connected to the Super Heavy booster. Those issues were unable to be resolved, and SpaceX called a scrub of the launch. Too many question marks about this flight and then we were 20 bar low on ground spin start pressure. Best to de-stack, inspect both stages, and try again in a day or two. SpaceX's CEO, Elon Musk, posted on X. Scrubs have been a rarity for SpaceX's Starship since its first test flight nearly two years ago. Across seven test flights, the company has maintained an impressive track record of launching almost exactly as planned. A remarkable feat for an experimental heavy lift rocket program. This level of reliability sets SpaceX apart from competitors like Blue Origin's New Glenn and Europe's Ariane 6, both of which have faced significant delays and setbacks. 
Amidst the wave of sad news related to the rocket launch, there is finally a ray of hope. The private landing ship Blue Ghost is here to turn things around. A breathtaking sunrise on the moon, captured by Firefly Aerospace's Blue Ghost lander as it begins its historic mission. After a flawless lunar touchdown on March 2nd, Blue Ghost settled near Mons La Trail, a towering peak in the Mare Crisium, the vast Sea of Crises, on the moon's northeastern near side. But it's not just there for the view. The lander has already activated its science payloads, beaming back stunning images of its surroundings and the distant Earth. Rise and shine, Firefly's Blue Ghost lander captured its first sunrise on the moon, marking the beginning of the lunar day and the start of surface operations in its new home. Our Ghost Riders have already begun operating many of the 10 NASA payloads aboard the lander and will continue operations over the next two weeks and into the lunar night. The company wrote on X. On board, 10 NASA instruments have begun collecting data on lunar composition, geology, heat flow, and space weather, with some set to operate even into the harsh lunar night. The mission will also test groundbreaking drilling technology and observe the mysterious way lunar dust levitates at sunset, a phenomenon that has puzzled scientists for years. Coming 46 days after its launch on a SpaceX Falcon 9, this landing marks a major triumph for Firefly Aerospace and a huge leap for private lunar exploration. Firefly is literally and figuratively over the moon, Firefly CEO Jason Kim said in a post-landing statement on Sunday. This bold, unstoppable team has proven we're well-equipped to deliver reliable, affordable access to the moon, and we won't stop there," Kim continued. With annual lunar missions, Firefly is paving the way for a lasting lunar presence that will help unlock access to the rest of the solar system for our nation, our partners, and the world. Blue Ghost was chosen as part of NASA's Commercial Lunar Payload Services CLPS program which enlists private companies to deliver the agency's science and technology payloads to the moon in support of the Artemis program. Another CLPS participant, Intuitive Machine's second lander, Athena Darwin M-2, successfully entered lunar orbit on Monday. Teams are now preparing for a landing attempt near the moon's south pole on Thursday, March 6th. But Athena isn't the only private lander gearing up for a lunar touchdown. Tokyo-based iSpace's Resilience Lander, which launched aboard the same rocket as Blue Ghost, is taking a more extended route to the moon, with its landing attempt scheduled for late May or early June.